happened in New Orleans, and they sat down and they watched Gordon and Brady, and they called each other and went, you know, Des Bryant's on the market. Nick Wright via the Coward Global Satellite Network in New York City is joining us. That's kind of my takeaway on it. I don't think Des is any better today than he was three months ago. What's your takeaway on it? I'm surprised by this. I think this is great for Des Bryant. I'm not sure if it's great for the Saints. I understand why the Saints would do it. They've got an incredibly productive number one receiver. But their second receiving threat this year is a running back. Their third receiving threat is a tight end who's your age, Colin. And their fourth <laughs> receiving threat is a rookie who has 12 catches on the year in Traquan Smith. So I get why they feel they have the need for a number two receiver. And if Dez's biggest issue is generating separation, pair him with the quarterback that you don't need any separation because he's so accurate he's basically handing you the football. But, man, this is a big belief in Sean Payton and their culture because this right now to me is the Super Bowl favorite in the NFC and you're bringing in something of a live wire. Maybe they not only saw what happened in New England with Josh Gordon, but they saw the team they just played in the Rams who despite just yeah. just beating them, the Rams brought in a bunch of live wires this offseason and it's worked out brilliantly for them. For Des, it's great. For the Saints, I think it's to be determined. Yeah, that's actually a great point on the Rams. You know what? Josh Gordon's working. If Dez works, T.O. better stay by the phone. He may get a phone call here in the next six months. <laughs> Slow down, Colin. Slow down. Yeah, something like that. Uh, okay, so Troy Aikman used two big words yesterday. Dysfunction and overhaul. I agree with the dysfunction. I don't think the Cowboys need an overhaul. I think they need a coach. What did you make of Aikman's thoughts? All right, so, Colin, just think of one of the many homes you own across the country. Oh, God. And the Cowboys, they, they listen, they've got a lot of really cool stuff, and they might have a pool table. That's their left tackle, Tyron Smith. They've got a really nice theater. That's Zeke Elliott. they got a pass rusher. That's, I assume, the spa or the pool you have out back. They, got a, they have two linebackers. they got an all-pro guard. They now have a wide receiver. But they don't have a foundation. That's the culture. They, they don't have even a, a ground level. That's the quarterback. And they don't have a coach. So they have everything you need except for the most important things you need. A coach, a quarterback, and a culture. They're like the bizarro Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks have those three things and that's it. They're four and four. The Cowboys have everything else, but not those three things. They're three and five. I think that's what Troy was getting at. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, here's the thing with Jason Garrett, and I see this with Mike McCarthy at Green Bay. I don't think they're bad coaches, but sometimes the world changes. And, uh oh, Facebook. I, I, oh, oh, online, Instagram. And if you don't embrace it, you look old and outdated. I look at Jason Garrett. He could be a coach somewhere, but I got to be honest. I watch Dallas's offense, and I see Green Bay's offense. I don't see a lot of motion. I don't see a lot of clever. That's kind of my takeaway. Is that what you see? I, well, yeah. I mean, I think both of these coaches, I think Mike McCarthy has achieved the minimum level any competent coach would achieve with Aaron Rodgers. I believe that. I think that we say you win a Super Bowl, you're an all-time great coach. I don't believe that to be the case. With Jason Garrett, I, you say that if he, you know, he could coach a lot of places. If he were to get fired, what's the next job he gets? Head coach at Air Force? Like, <laughs> I don't know who's lining up to offer Jason Garrett this job again. I don't know who's lining up to ask him in the NFL to be an offensive coordinator. Like, Jason Garrett is very well qualified for the job he has because the Jerry Jones specter looms over it. But his one calling card has been, since he took over the Cowboys, only the Patriots and the Steelers have fewer losing seasons at zero. He just has the one the year Romo got hurt and Whedon came in. I They're going to have a losing season this year with the level of talent on the roster despite Dak's clear limitations. They, like... I think they've got to move on from him. And I know, by the way, Colin, there's almost nothing in your career you regret more than saying you were wrong about Dak when you were right. I'm you not. were on the right. It's like it's like, it's like you're picking a stock and you abandoned it too early. You were right about Dak. It just took us 40 games to see it. Yeah, speaking of Dak, I made the comparison to Blake Bortles is that 
Blake Bortles had the defense, he had the star running back, and he was better running than throwing, and we knew he had a ceiling, and they extended him, and now they're trapped with him, and Jacksonville looks like the fourth-best team in their division with the fourth-best quarterback by a mile. I kind of feel Dak and Blake Bortles, that's, that's the connection to me. That's what I see. Am I that far off? No, and I hear Jerry Jones saying we're going to extend Dak. If he extends Dak this offseason, it'll be the most grievous error he's made since he fired Jimmy Johnson or moved on from Jimmy Johnson. Like, you people in today's NFL, where passing's never been more important, where the teams with the biggest edge are not the teams with the best quarterbacks always, but the teams with the best cheap quarterbacks, the Chiefs, the Rams, the Eagles, the Texans, like, go, I'm leaving some out. The, there's a line. I call it the Matt Ryan line. If your quarterback is Matt Ryan's skill level or above, then you can give him the 20 plus million dollar extension. Cam, Phillip Rivers, obviously Rodgers, Brady, Big Ben, Breeze. I'm leaving some guys out. But if he's beneath Matt Ryan and you give him that extension, it kills you. That's Derek Carr. That's Matt Stafford. That's Alex Smith. That's that. That's Kirk Blake Cousins. Bortles. That is yeah. obviously Dak. Kirk, uh, yeah. Kirk Cousins is right on the fringe, right? But yeah. that is obviously Dak Prescott. You, when you decide to pay a quarterback what it costs to bring in three quality players, they better be an awesome quarterback. I have no evidence Dak is an awesome quarterback. So uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about LeBron. Lakers are four and six. They've got five close losses. Uh, they're third in the league in scoring. A lot more fun to watch this year. Third in field goal percentage. Lousy on defense, but few in the league play it anymore. Um, I think they're where we thought they would be. I think I, I, I look at it tonight. If they beat Minnesota, they're five and six. They beat the crappy teams. They lose to Toronto, a very good team, and they're 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 competitive with everybody else i'm okay with where they sit i don't get the magic johnson luke walton story what's your takeaway of the first 10 games my takeaway is that right now they're getting a version of lebron that the Cavs got literally until the trade deadline last year and that's an important date lebron last year if you remember he even said that was the date the day of the trade deadline he had a game-winning shot i believe it was against minnesota the last 30 games of the year whatever it was he was absolutely unreal then went on the greatest playoff run we've ever seen from an individual player why is the trade deadline important with all the change on the team from the Kyrie trade to the next trade all of it what lebron was doing in the first 50 plus games of the year was seeing what everyone could do that he was not imposing his will to squeeze out every single win possible because he wanted to see who could do what. I, I know LeBron's averaging 27, 8, and 8 this year, so it seems like it's same old LeBron. It is not same old LeBron if you're watching it. I believe that's intentional. He is using this part of the season so they can find out, is Luke Walton the right guy? Who is Brandon Ingram really? What can Lonzo do? Who are the guys we might move at the deadline? And then once the team is set, once they're in a real playoff push, we will see the LeBron we saw in the stretch run last year. He would be, you will not get, they know they're not winning the title this year. It's impossible. No one's beating the Warriors. What they need, this is an information year. And it would, I'm not comparing myself, I, I'm going to, if when I was filling in for you, Colin, yeah. it would not have done me, you, or FS1 any benefit if you came in halfway through every show and walked me through segments, <laughs> sat on the couch, were like, why don't you do this, Nick? Like, you got to figure out if I could sink or swim. Yeah. I think that's what LeBron's doing with the Lakers, what he's doing with the coach. And so when that's the case, it's an average roster with one awesome player. They're going to have an average record. Well, I like Kyle Kuzma and Nick Wright, so that whole thing made sense to me. That was very good right there. Thanks a lot. Good, good talking to you, buddy. Talk to you later, my friend. All right. Hugh Jackson, Browns coach, next hour. I, I like, I've supported Hugh a lot on this show. A lot of people, remember, he went 0-16. Yeah, I said, uh, re-sign him. When they fired him last week, two weeks ago, I said, Oh, okay. So Baker Mayfield's better without an offensive coach. Uh, so Hugh Jackson's coming on the show. Uh, I have been often on the Hugh Jackson Island. Uh, I have supported him through it, and I think he'd be a great head football coach at the college level. Hugh Jackson in the room can sell a program. Uh, he's going to be joining us next hour. Uh, coming up next, 
So I know a lot of people were watching all the politics and stuff last night. Not 